Can an Ethernet switch that's supposed to do 10 gigabits per second that I bought on Amazon really work at full line rate, full duplex? I don't know. Let's test it and see. Hi, Mike Panaki here with Network Protocol Specialists. What we're going to do is we're going to check out this new MicroTik switch I just got off of Amazon and see if it'll really do 10 gig full duplex. So here's the switch that we got. And this is the MicroTik CRS306-G-4S Plus IN. So what this is, this is a little switch that they've got. It's got four... SFP plus slots on it, and it's got one one gig slot. It's got this nice metal case. It's got two power ports on the back, and it'll run off of PoE. Pretty nifty little switch. Now when you get it, these four slots right here are empty, so you need to provide your own SFPs, or in this case, I'm using a DAC cable. I went out and got this copper SFP plus a 10G base T adapter. It does 10 gig, it does uh, uh, 1 gig, plugs in there, works real nice. Now, I've got this connected right here to my Net Ally Etherscope NXG. This has a port that's capable of doing 10, 100, 1000, 2.5, 2.5 gig, 5 gig, and 10 gig. So we've got that hooked up via copper, and over here, We've got an SFP slot connected to our DAC cable that's connected to another Etherscope NXG. So let's go over to the Etherscope NXG and take a look at our performance test. So I'm going to come in here to my performance test and I'm going to configure this performance test so that we are doing a one or a 10 gig test with this. So I'm going to select my 10G right there. And I'm going to go back. So what we've what I've done is I've set this up to do a 10 gig test. In fact, let's go in and take a look at that test real quick so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to click on that. So in this case, we're going to do a 10 gig test. We've set the IP address of the other Etherscope NXG. I've set my frame size to 512. Uh, Frankly, we wouldn't see 10 gig of traffic going across with 5 12 byte frames, but this is a way to exercise that switch and make it do more frames per second. I've set my up rate, my down rate to 10 gigabits per second, so I'm doing full line rate, full duplex. I've set my threshold to 0% loss. If I lose one frame as part of this test, we're going to fail the test. Uh, our overrides and so on are all set to the default values. So we're going to come back here and we're going to run our test. So I'm going to go back. This is going to be a 30 second test. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. We see that we kick on our 10 gig test. It's doing 10 gig up and 10 gig down. And right there we see our loss is 0%. Our latency is around 36 microseconds and our jitter is less than one microsecond. So as we start going through, you'll notice that we're at 9.9 .9 gigabits per second. That's because this is counting our data rate, not the entire frame with the headers on it. So our actual data rate is going to be less than 10 gigabits per second, but we are using up 10 gigabits per second of bandwidth. So if I come in and select this, we can see that our up throughput was at 10 gigabits per second. Our down throughput was at 10 gigabits per second. We see our frame loss right here was consistently zero all the way across during our test. And we can see what our latency looks like in here. So right now our average latency in this case came out about 72.6 microseconds. And we can see what our jitter is in there. I was looking for a switch to use in my lab that was a nice price at $138. Not a bad price. Now, I do have to provide my own SFPs or my own DAC cables to connect to it. But nice little switch to use in the lab, and I'm very happy to see that it can do 10 gigabits per second. 
Thanks for joining me for this video and keep your eye out for more videos where we go in and test different pieces of equipment to find out how do they perform in the lab.